Hello, this is the last part of the 2022 Oxford Pack. We got up to question 20. Two unbiased dice are rolled. The numbers obtained are multiplied. What's the probability that the product is even? Right, well, we only need one of the numbers or both the numbers to be even. Yeah, the only way we can get an odd number is having two odd numbers multiplied together. So that's going to be three quarters then. Which product has a probability of one in 12? to occur right so one in 12 well we've got total number of permutations is 36 so we'd want three out of 36 there so we're gonna have to have a number that we can make in three different ways so it's gonna have to be a square so yeah uh one times four four times one two times two so four looks good what is the probability that the product is greater than 28? So how do we get to 28? If we only go, well, you've got 6 times 6, 5 times 6, 6 times 5. Anything with 4 in isn't going to work. So it's just going to be those three. So that's going to be 1 in 12. Which product or products has or have the highest probability to occur? Right. Um, right so how do we work this one out? How do we work this out? So we're going to have a certain, we're going to have symmetry about the centre on this. So we are going to have products. We're going to have a wide range of numbers, aren't we? We are going to want a wide range. So we're going to want to, how is this going to work? You want to have a wide range of numbers that have got common factors. So we're not, we're not going to want to have five in it because it's prime. That's going to cause issues if it's a multiple of five. We want to have so I don't know, so six has got a lot of factors. So if we did have six, then we would have one times six, two times three, and then the reverse of those. So six times one and three times two. So we've got four permutations there for six. That's got to be better than we've got for, well, two, three, four, five, seven, Eight isn't going to be as good, is it? Because we're only going to have two times four and four times two in order to get to eight. Nine isn't great. Neither's 10, neither's 11. 12 has got a lot. So 12, you can do two times six, six times two, three times four, four times three. So that's also got that. 13, 14, 15. Yeah, it's going to be those ones. Have we got any others that have got so if you went up as high as 18, but then we're reducing because you'd only have six times three. So, yeah, it's going to have to be these two. It doesn't feel the most satisfactory way of working out how it is, but it's going to be six and 12. And I suppose, I don't know. I don't know how else I'd go about doing it. You can just sort of step your way through and see the patterns happening as you're moving through various combinations. So, well, that's all I've got to offer on that, really. But still, that's another part. I'm sure these are right. But anyway, uh, if the product is known to be even, what is the probability that it's also divisible by four? So how are we going to get up to each one? Again, what's the best way of doing this? The probability is even. So we know that's three quarters of them. Then... So if it was divisible by four, then we've got all of these possible ways of getting that. Well, we know we've got one there and none there and none there. 24 we can get in two ways. 20 we can get in two ways. 16 we can only get in one way. 12 we know we can do in four ways. Eight we can do in two ways and four we can do in three ways. So that's 5, 10, 15 different ways of three quarters of the options. So, yeah, 15 different ways of three quarters of the options. And three quarters of the options is 27. So 15 out of 27, which is 5 over 9. Right, again, that didn't feel very satisfactory either. But... I don't know. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that those are the five correct answers. If you've got a better way of going about it, not that that took that long, but maybe you've got some insightful approach, then let me know in the comments. But that's all I've got to offer there. Question 21. 
Ball of mass 2M slides along a frictionless track speed U, starting from a long distance away, it collides elastically with a stationary ball of mass M. Calculate the final speeds of both the balls. Right, so we're just going to do conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. So we've got 2M U, that's what we started with, is equal to 2M, let's call them V1 and V2 then. So we'll have 2M V1 plus M V2. And then we'll have our half mv squared on all of these. So we'll have a half of m times u squared. So that's just going to be well, um, m u squared then, isn't it? Because we've got m in inverted commas is 2m. That is going to equal mv1 squared for the same reasoning, plus a half mv2 squared. So... We can get rid of all of these m's all over the place. So we've got 2u equals 2v1 plus v2, and double these, 2u squared equals 2v squared, v1 squared plus v2 squared. So we're just replacing, well, let's replace v2, 2v1 squared plus 2u minus 2v1, all squared let's go down a little bit there are other ways of doing all of this but yeah let's stick with this now that we've started so 2v1 squared plus 4u squared minus 8uv1 plus 4v1 squared so that means if we're what we're going to be solving for that we want to get what v1 is in terms of u so Let's get our V1 squared. So we've got 6V1 squared minus 8UV1 plus 2U squared equals 0. So we can halve these. 3V1 squared minus 4UV1 plus U squared. Is that going to factorise? Yes, it is. 3V1 minus U, V1 minus U equals zero well if v1 is equal to u that just means they've missed each other so we don't want that we want that v1 is equal to u over three which means then that v2 will be equal to where are we on all of this so we've got two thirds so it will be equal to four u over three just sticking it into this thing up here so is that everything they wanted? I think they just did one. Like, calculate the final speeds of both balls. Yeah. If both balls were now positively electrically charged, describe qualitatively either how the results would change or why you would leave the results unaltered. unaltered. Um, right, I suppose. Well, what if they describe this as? Because it makes you wonder. Calculate the final speeds. Yeah, see, that's an interesting way of putting it here. Because normally, I hadn't picked up on this when... I read the question normally they'll say something like calculate the speeds of the balls immediately after the collision but they've gone for final speed here so it it does um yeah it puts uh, an emphasis on that word final there so if we've got final speed uh so yeah if final speed means um the ball has arrived from infinity and it's gone back to infinity from infinity and then returned to infinity and and the reason that that is important is that um ie potential energy is equal to zero then we can say the there won't be any change everything will be the same then final speeds will be the same will be the same um but yeah i mean in, i won't bother writing this bit out but otherwise in between when you've got some potential energy obviously that's taking away from the kinetic energy because you've got a fixed amount we're conserving our energy there so the speeds will be lower if they're in between because you're you're firing these two things closer together it's going to be slowing them before impact, isn't it? Because you're building up that potential energy because they're both positively charged. So rather than having as much kinetic energy on impact, you're going to have a combination of kinetic and potential. 
but then that potential will be converted back into the kinetic energy again. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's, um, yeah, that was another nice question. Uh, keeping things going um, on that front. Right. So question 22, consider the following set of equations that, 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 that find the possible values of X, which satisfy all of these. So, right. So, well, let's just sub into the first one, the second one into the first one. Then we can get rid of Y straight away. So 2X plus X squared equals Z. And then, oh, we can do the same in the bottom one then. So Z plus 2X squared equals 2X cubed. So that means that now we can get rid of Z and say that 2X, uh, well, 2X plus 3x squared, nope, 3x squared, is going to be equal to 2x cubed. Right, so that means we've got 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x equals 0. And we just want x out of all of this, right? So, okay, x, um, 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 is equal to zero that's factorizing again isn't it 2x da, 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 plus one and then x minus two equals zero so we've got x is equal to zero a half or two right that is a gift of five marks but this does i mean i suppose the most interesting thing to say about this is this is question 22 i think there were 23 maybe 24 questions i think it was 23 in this paper if they're giving you five marks like that on question 22, they never used to do that in the old PAT papers. So you've got easy marks being thrown in right at the end. So it really adds even more to the old exam technique of go through the question paper looking for the easy ones. Because who would want to miss out on that because they took too long on an early question? So, yeah. Right, that's question 22. Question 23. The number of atoms NX in a sample of a radioactive substance X decays with time. Yeah, OK, that's just a decay equation. Yeah, they're just saying things. The half-life of a substance is defined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Substance A has a half-life of one hour. Right, so let's get these things down here. So for A, we've got T and a half is one hour. Great. 36% alpha and 64% are beta. Substance B, half-life 15 minutes. It's got 56% alpha, 44% beta. If the total particle emission rate of a substance is that, yeah, it's just telling us that, and they start with the same amount of each stuff, what time in minutes passes before the beta particle emission rates from the two samples are equal? OK, right. So this has got a lower percentage going into beta, but it's just decaying so much quicker. So we've got a higher emission rate in all of this. Right. OK, so we've got the same amount of each. So the emission rate, which is our lambda n, is equal to lambda n zero e to the minus lambda t we also know that lambda is equal to natural log two divided by the half-life so we can stick a whole load of stuff in here then we need to make the emission rate of beta for each one right so we've got 64 percent 0.64 we're dealing with a then we need to multiply by lambda. Let's keep it in hours. So that would be log two over one. Then we need to multiply by, n. well, they've got the same n zero, but okay, I'll put it in. E to the minus lambda t. So that's going to be E to the minus, well, t times log two. Let's just ignore the one. And that has got to be equal to 0. Point, what was it, 0.44 for the 44% of the other one. Then we're going to have log base two, um, natural log two of, well, sticking in hours, so we'll have a quarter there. Then we'll have our n zero. Then we'll have our minus t 
log, natural log of two over a quarter. Right, so we just have to solve that for t. <clears throat> Excellent. Right, so let's give it rid of that, 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 that. Uh, we need to multiply this by four, four times that. Okay, so let's scroll down a bit more. We've got 0. Point, let's just write this out again, 0. 0.64. Then that's going to be e to the, actually, let's multiply through by the e so they're not minuses anymore. So that's going to be e to the, uh, what have we got? 4t natural log 2. That has got to be equal to 4 times. 0.44, so that's 1.76 times, where are we? E to the T natural log 2. Great. So now we can do our, well, if we divide by E to the power of T natural log 2, then we'll just have three of them. So E to the 3 T natural log 2 is 1.76 over 0.64. So that means that T is going to be equal to, so we're going to do a natural log of both sides, 1.76 over 0.64. And then we're going to divide by 3 log natural log 2. Right, let's put all of this in and see what we end up with. So 1. 0.76 divided by 0.64 is that natural log of the answer is that and then we need to divide by 3 natural log 2 which gives a grand total of 0.486 that's in hours though isn't it and they want time in minutes so multiply by 60 gives us 29.2 minutes okay well that wasn't that bad really was it <laughs> so that's another reason to skip on to look at the easy questions at the end of the paper because we just had 10 marks handed over there at the end is that the last one as i recall or was there a 24 that's the end of it so yeah quite a straightforward finish actually to the, the last set i think were more difficult than these in 2022 but that's brought us to the end of that paper.